Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the final round chase card coverage of the 2020 Silver Cup presented by Discmania. We're watching GK Pro coverage brought sponsored by Discraft. I'm Nathan Queen, and I am again here with Brian Earhart. You are here with Brian Earhart, Nathan, and we have an awesome chase card to watch here. Um, an, again, a lot of star studded names, and one name that you really need to know about. We have Johnny McRae, Matt Bell, Emerson Keith. We have Ezra Adderholt, and I believe he's from the Dakotas. Is that correct? Yeah, I think it's South Dakota. South Dakota, and this kid rips. And if you haven't heard of him before, you will after this round. Um, I I love watching the players attack this course. Yeah, it's a fun course to watch. Uh, I got to play with Ezra uh, last week at the Preserve, and he absolutely bombs the disc. So I'm excited to see him attack a more wooded course and see what kind of control he has as well. Absolutely, and you'll get to see that on this hole, hole number one. Double fairway, and I love that both fairways have a feasible option. Sometimes when you do get double fairways, one of them is kind of a sucker gap, but I've seen players take both lines uh, pretty evenly, it seems like. Yeah, it seems like birdie looks uh, from either side. Uh, this hole is averaging just about a quarter stroke under par at 2.67, uh, so we should expect to see at least one birdie here. Yeah, and that, that's a common miss going up the middle, just pushing it a bit too far forward. You have to get the disc going right, right out of your hand if you're trying to get that gap. Um, with s kind of a straighter disc, not necessarily an overstable. I think Johnny's going to go with the hard turnover. Yeah, and that's looking pretty good. Oh, not quite enough to the right. Sometimes you have a little uh, framed up putt in there. Yeah. And uh, Johnny's a good putter, so... We'll see how that goes. Emerson's going to line up the forehand off to the straight gap or the left side. And these justices have a lot of ground play when they hit the dirt. After hitting a tree, he did not get the skip he was probably hoping for. Looks like he was about circle's edge just outside and uh, did have a framed up putt. And here's Ezra also going with the forehand. Smooth release there, just a little bit hot, came off to the left. This is that framed up putt you were talking about. Yeah, it's a cool, it's a good look. It's nice to have a frame sometimes. Um, maybe from a little bit closer, yeah. so you don't have to yeah. worry about that. But Matt Bell's one of the best putters on tour here, so I wouldn't be surprised if this one catches some type of metal. Oh. So close. Early turbo. Oh, that looked like it had a good angle on it. It was starting to go left. Here's Emerson from about 45 feet. Oh, strong left side chains. Uh, just not quite enough to hold on. We've got Ezra here trying to save a par with a funny stance. Great putt. Nice putt. You never want to bogey the shortest hole in the course. Absolutely not. Yeah, that's a good um, confidence-boosting putt right there. 25 feet for par mm -hmm. and hit it dead center. Johnny doing the same thing as we expect. Simple par there for Matt Bell. And you'd think this hole, just looking at it through the hole preview, that it would get birdied way more, but throughout our commentary, we did not see that many birdies on the hole, to be honest with you. No, not as many as I expected to see, but it is the, a pretty tough, tighter starting hole. Absolutely. And then this one, uh, definitely just as tight off the tee. Uh, it is a big turnover to this landing zone, and you want to shoot back down the hill. Pretty simple par four. You can play it mid-mid. You could probably play it putter-putter. I think you'll see some forehands out of these players as well. Yeah, you really just want to make it up to the top of that hill on this first shot. If you don't make it up there, then you have to try to work through. Yeah, Matt's going to be a little low on the left. 
So he'll have to try to, uh, you know, cut just past the mando and go over top of all the rough stuff rather than getting down to the bottom of the hill. And that's a, a solid turnover. Beautiful turnover shot from Johnny McRae. <clears throat> Emerson going with the forehand. He'll probably have a pretty big hyzer angle on this, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of room to push the disc out to the left on that shot, so you really have to kind of jam it forward. Not too bad of a positioning. Yeah, he does that pretty well here. Ezra going with the forehand as well. Oh, just wide. Um, he'll be throwing, most likely throwing over top of all... All that rough just past the Mando. Like Bell's doing. If that can float right, not fade out too much, he'll have a putt at it. Little bit short left. Little roll. All right. Oh, man. Great shot and an even better roll to roll from circle's edge to about 15, 14 feet there. And I think I just saw the label of that disc. That is a zone, I believe, that he is throwing. So shout out to Discraft for that. Johnny with a cut roller thrower there gets him about just inside the circle. He'll have a good look for his three. And again, they, they call this hole a par three, but it averaged a 3.6, and I don't believe it was twoed one time. So definitely scored as a par four, especially in this round. Matt Bell giving it one of his good runs from circle two. Good, good bogey comeback <laughs> putt there. Johnny to get his three after some good ground play. Emerson making it look pretty simple. Forehand, forehand. Mm -hmm. Ezra as well. He didn't quite make the corner, but a uh, great forehand up over the top. Able to tap in his three real easy. Moving on to hole three. Uh, 365 feet, uh, you want to go through this middle gap here just to the right of that leaning tree and have it tailing off to the left a little bit. Um, Right-handed backhand, hyzer stand-up shot, or forehand or lefty backhand uh, turnover flex shot. Johnny loves these hyzer flips. Yep, he threw steep hyzer with something oh, a little man. bit flippy, and as it was hyzering, it was starting to stand up. So close. He just catches that the thick rough on the right. And Emerson, Emerson tried to follow suit. It's really hard to get a flippy disc to kind of push left before flipping. Yeah, that's the common mistake here for the righty backhand is pushing straight. Ezra got a better kick there, and he's going to have... Uh, 50, 55 foot putt there to possibly get it to. Matt Bell also pushing it a little straighter than he wanted. He'll have an open stance. I don't know what line he'll have, though. Playing with Matt Bell as many times as I have... Uh, that's one of the easier scrambles I've ever seen him make. <laughs> yeah, that was a great push, pushed forward forehand. He didn't have a whole lot of spin on it. He was pushing it forward so it would hyzer quickly around that corner. It's a great upshot from him. Johnny maybe getting a little greedy trying to run that one. Clipped a little tree. He might have a look at the basket. Emerson with just a little touch flex that it looks like he practiced that. I wonder if he could just play the whole course with a justice flick. I, think <laughs> I wonder he'd, how he'd score out here. He'd still shoot under. <laughs> oh, and Ezra giving it a good bid after the after the fortunate kick, able to hit the basket. Uh, but three is not really losing strokes on too many people on this hole. 
No, this one actually averaged a 3.29, so it did average over par. And, and you can really attribute that to a lot of these little trees that are set up in the fairway to kind of carve this really unique flex line. You don't see a lot of par threes with this distance shaping that. Yeah, it's um, it's a great line for me as a lefty backhand. I, I'm able to have a chance to get up there in the circle a little more often. Yeah, and it's <laughs> you did execute that yesterday. One of the prettiest shots I've actually ever seen. Um, Thank you. But uh, after the righties get through that hole, they move into hole number four, the lighthouse hole. This is toable if you saw off a drive on purpose. Kind of get inside yeah. of that tree right there. It's a little sneaky to get down to circle one. If you do follow the flight of the drone, you'll give yourself more than likely a 60 to 80 footer layup to the basket. But the thing is, putting on this basket with all the wind coming off of Lake Michigan, it's a tall basket. So you're just coming in at kind of a steep angle. is kind of scary. Yeah, and during this final round, the wind had picked up out there on the peninsula when I went through. So um, it's possible to see some 15, 15 to 20 miles an hour wind out there when we oh. get on the green. Johnny just catching that last tree. He was going to get down there nice, but he'll still have a, a decent upshot to try to get his three. This is looking good out of Emerson. Oh, he catches the same thing. Pretty much the same result. They'll be throwing a pretty similar shot from there. Oh, I was so close to getting a nice flare down to the green, but again, anything down in that flat area gives you an opportunity to get up and down for the three and that's really all you're looking for on this hole yeah just long right is actually the most common place i saw people go on this hole uh where ezra's at over there yeah. and it's not too hard to uh, get up and down for your three and that's a solid shot for matt bell yeah right in the middle he doesn't have to worry about any branches or anything he'll be throwing it flat right to the bottom of the lighthouse And the highs are out of Johnny catching a little bit of limb up top, keeping him short. That's a, that's a pretty scary putt to run right there. It's also a very scary spike hyzer with, you know, how much wind and how much swirling wind we have coming off the lake. Yeah, getting the disc up that high in the air with that much uh, flight plate exposed, it can really pick up and carry. Yeah. Matt Bell with the touch forehand playing long of the basket. I believe that's a little better win for the putt there. Yeah, there was a tailwind from that side of the basket. Ezra throwing his zone. Another little touch shot. He's tall enough. He's really just tapping that in. Johnny McRae giving it a little half run. You could tell he wasn't super confident about running it from that far no you never want a three put on this basket it's it's one of those par fours where you will be losing some strokes if you do take a four in this hole nice putt there from emerson yeah that's a solid strong putt from 20 feet on this elevated basket yeah with our pro field that we had this hole was a little bit of a tweener it averaged a 3.45 so 0.55 strokes under par so which you, is fair i think it's yeah. um this is still one of my one of my favorite holes on the course he, um even with it Absolutely. being kind of the tweener hole you know it's a great shot that you have to execute off the first mm -hmm. off the tee and then no matter where your upshot's at it's still a chance that you're not going to be able to yeah, get that birdie exactly. that birdie putt in there so yeah as you can see ezra is well over six feet and that basket still towered over him Moving into hole number five, uh, one of the more straightforward holes in the course, uh, 330 feet, a little bit uphill, and we have some bushes that force a bit of a nose-up shot. Uh, if you want to get rid of that nose-up angle, you have to throw some sort of overstable disc on a steep Anheuser, flex it to the basket, or do what Emerson's doing, and I think he's just going with a pure Heiser forehand. Is that an Explorer in his hand? I believe he does like to flick an Explorer a lot. That's it. As you can see why. He's just a little bit short, uh, right outside the circle. A uh, real good chance for Emerson to make that putt. Looks like Ezra's got a putter in his hand. Threw it maybe 60%. Flat 
floating on over the trees. That's a beautiful shot from this Yeah, round. just about pin height, 20, 22 feet there. I've watched Matt Bell throw this disc quite often. I can't remember what it is. Um, he rips on it pretty well, though. I do know he likes throwing the squall from DGA, which is, a, I believe, like a six or a seven speed, kind of a driver mid-range hybrid. Johnny here also looks like he's going with the mid-range, just catching the top of that last bush. We've got a few circle two putts here. Hopefully we can watch a couple connect. Mm. Matt Bell, just off to the right and low. I imagine we'll see him start hitting these putts pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Johnny with the stepper, never a doubt. Got a little fist pump. He's happy about that one. Get him rolling. Emerson from about the same distance as Johnny here. Nice putt. And this hole is one of the easier holes on the course. Um, good putt there from Ezra to get three out of four birdies here. Yeah, this is definitely one of those holes that you are really wanting to get. Cameron Messerschmidt here, PDJ number 58814 with Team Storm Disc Golf. Today we're going to be showing you the radar. It's got pretty straight neutral flight qualities, and I'm going to demonstrate that as we throw into hole five's green here out at the Preserve Championships. Today, we'll be talking about the Nuke. The Nuke is a wide-rimmed, fast, maximum distance driver. When throwing on a wide open course with the Nuke, I'm using it to unleash maximum backhand distance potential. Due to its slim profile and wide rim, the Nuke also fits really well in the hand when throwing sidearms. If I'm looking to throw down some boom sauce, I'm going with the Nuke. You can pick one up at discraft.com or your local disc golf retailer. So here we are to hole six, which is a great par four, uh, 503 feet up the hill. You'll see it's just some backhand, backhand flex shots, or we, we've seen a couple rollers so far. You want to get up to about where these guys are at right now, or this tree stump, and land exactly in the middle of the fairway so you have a good look to get into this tunnel to the green. Yeah, the moment you get off the center cut of the fairway, those two kind of soldier trees outside of the gap really make you throw some sort of creative trick shot almost through the gap. Um, we do see a lot of players trying to bypass that by throwing a big roller, and I think he's going with this as well. Yeah, this is the first time on the course that you actually get to get to or have to, however you want to look at it, uh, throw pretty hard. So yeah. it does, you know, you're not used to that just yet, so that can add some difficulty to it as well. Yeah, Emerson kind of cuts his off a little bit too much, and it r rolls out to the right side. Oh, come on. Looked like a nuke out of Ezra there. Uh, just off to the right. He's, he's, up, he's up there pretty far, though. Yeah, and, that should uh, be a nice zone flick up to the basket. Got Johnny McRae. 
who's just a master of lines and uh, flexes it right back to the center That's of the fairway. That's perfect. And just as far as, you know, almost just as far as we were seeing everybody get yesterday. Johnny's got that sneaky power. So does Matt Bell. Yeah, Matt Bell going with the nice flex line, getting it right up there. I believe that's a hurricane he's throwing, that green one. Another awesome 12-speed disc from DGA. Emerson with the forehand cut oh, roller here. And that's looks, that trick shot. Yeah. It looks like he hit the line that he wanted to, just got a little bounce into that tree. Yeah, and Matt's crushed his drive. Leaks it a little left, but comes right on through, and a pretty easy par putt from there. Excuse me, birdie putt. I can't believe Johnny at at his age, just well, like so much older than the rest of the players. Whoa! Oh, that's very uncharacteristic. Hey. Looks like he um had a little bit of grip lock there. I've actually never seen him do something like that before. Don't believe. Oh Whoa. my gosh! Ezra trying to throw it in for the eagle. So close. <laughs> Little hang loose there from Ezra. <laughs> Emerson getting up there for his par after trying to scramble out. Let's see if Johnny can still convert. He got up to about pin height, I believe. Oh, just a little bit too much in the way. He'll be able to get his par, though. Yeah, that's one of those, one, you know, one in yeah. 500 throws that... Yeah, we're not going to see that real often. No. Good birdie there from Ezra. Almost the eagle giving the basket a little tap there. And uh, another good birdie from Matt. This is um, one of the better par fours on the course, in my opinion. And it played almost right at par at 3.95. Yeah, I think there were a lot of design elements on that hole that make it, despite the distance being shorter, it makes it a really solid par four. This one, on the other hand, is kind of playing as a tweener this week. Uh, they did clean up a left gap for righties to throw a power flex to get a nice 500-foot downhill uh, birdie slash eagle. Um, if you're not going for the two here you're probably playing the right gap for a hyzer or for nathan queen having to throw a putter up the gut yeah it's a pretty easy three um if you're not going for the two yeah but i imagine we'll <laughs> see all four players here going for that too absolutely and this wow is already looking great out of ezra as long as that finishes yep inside the circle that's such a direct line for him to throw. That's a fantastic shot. It's like Matt has his hurricane again. Full sand. And that's got to keep pushing right. Whew. Looks like he's just made it in bounds right around circle two's edge. And uh, easy birdie from there. We'll probably even see a good run for the Eagle. Emerson getting it out there. That's a good late stand That's up. That's got to stand up more. He pushes it through, and he'll have a inside a circle two look. The thing, the thing about this hole that's been happening this week is this hole... Right as you release your disc, there is a left to right crosswind that is gently pushing your disc out to the right. So too much hyzer out of the hand is going to get it shoved and kind of saw it off to the left like a, uh, three of these players had. Matt Bell threw some trees. Still giving it a good run. Um, he'll be right there for his three. Emerson looking to connect on another circle two putt here. Ooh. Came out of his hand a little bit low, I believe. Johnny with another step putt, just killing it. 
I was trying to finish this thought before he threw that little grip lock on the, the previous hole, but Johnny just being so much older than the rest of the field and still keeping up in the, the distance realm is, is mind-boggling to me. And the fact that he's getting eagles on this course, 500 foot, is extremely impressive. I don't even think he has an age. <laughs> I think he's timeless. And a great two from Ezra. Yeah, it's great to watch Johnny throw. He's um he's really smooth and he knows how to put the line on the disc. Yeah, absolutely. Plus he's still got the power to go along with the line. Yeah. So it's um it's great to watch Johnny throw. Hope to keep watching him throw for 10, 15 more years. You'll probably be seeing him for longer than that. <laughs> Matt taps in his three. Couple eagles, couple birdies moving into one of the tougher par threes out here, hole number eight, the launch pad hole. Players are having to throw a downward hyzer through a low ceiling, and that wood chip pile right there is really where you want your shot to land and skip towards the basket. The shape and the placement of that patch of wood chips is perfect for getting your disc to the basket. Um, what's challenging, though, is throwing a hyzer that downward. Yeah, the downhill, the downhill and left-to-right slope yeah. of this fairway uh, just makes the disc fly a little different than you expect it to. You're trying to keep it low below the ceiling, and um, it just it wants to keep pushing right no matter how much hyzer you put on it. And, and the fact is that tree right there, that Y tree right off the tee, forces you to throw the disc with hyzer out of your hand. You can't throw a flex shot or a flat shot down the hill. So it's I actually love the shape of this, of this fairway. Yeah, I think this is... Um, between this one and hole 14, probably my favorite par three. Oh, definitely. Matt gets a good move on it. Just misses the wood chips, but he had enough speed on that that it flared right on awesome up there anyway. Awesome shot. Park job. Love watching that. That looks pretty good. Looking good out of Emerson. He missed the wood chips as well, and I think he had a little slower disc, so it didn't skip quite as fast. But great shot inside yeah. the circle. Ezra just kind of pitching out. And uh, there you can see he had hyzer on that, and it still jumped down the hill to the right. Uh, just showing you how much angle is really on this hill. Good shot from Johnny there, pitching up as well. Emerson to get that eagle stroke he missed back, getting the birdie. Great, too. And I, I like the way he played a more direct hyzer than... Uh... A good par save from Ezra, having to pitch out of the woods a little bit. And we'll see Matt and Johnny clean up their birdie and par here. That's a great par three, and it was averaging 2.99 right, right at par. Wow. Hole number nine, par four. Pretty standard tee shots here we've been seeing all day and all week. A uh, lot of power hyzers over the road. Um, some players I have seen try to throw a really long shot behind these cedars and skip off the road to a eagle opportunity. A lot of players are playing Adam it Hams. early. <laughs> Adam Hams uh, in particular. Um, but there is an early hyzer route in front of the Cedars. Just hoping to get down to that flat spot. Matt Bell's going to try to push this over the road. Get a skip off of the road, it looks like. Two skips off the road. Pushes it long of the Cedars. Yeah. And is going to have an eagle putt. Yeah, especially if he gets a roll down that hill. Emerson a little more direct towards the gap. Looks like he's going to air it right to it. That's a great shot as well. A lot of these par fours are just very tee shot heavy. Once you get the shot in play, the upshot is a lot simpler than most par fours we see on tour. But a lot of really demanding tee shots. Right. Yeah, if you can get it right where you want to in the fairway, that's great. But then you see here... He's pretty close to the basket, but that is not going to be easy to get up and down for his three. Johnny missing the road skip, but doesn't matter. 
Grass flares them just as far. Perfect shot. It's exactly where you want to be. And these cedars here are trouble. And he's got a... He's gotten through them. And he's out for a uh, 40, 45 foot look there. That's a good up shot. Scramble shot. Yeah, for real. Emerson with the good jump up. Tap, tapping in his three there. He get, you get a little smile out of him. Johnny probably trying to give this a bid. Oh, oh what a great bid it was, too. Just low. He was wanting that one. He's feeling it. <laughs> Matt didn't quite get down the hill. Leaves his bid up just a little bit high and floats it, but he's right there for his three as well. And Ezra for a solid birdie save. Oh yeah, step nice putt. Nice putt. Fist pumped it. He's feeling it too. He's having a he's having a good weekend. Nice. Look how big he is, man. He just looks ripped. <laughs> Definitely looks the part of uh, somebody who should be on the chase card. That's for sure. Matt tapping in the birdie as well. Good birdie there from Johnny. And Emerson even closer. Oh. Fail. <laughs> uh, good star frame there, which is kind of what you expect on, on, um, on hole 11. And that will do it for the front nine coverage. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Make sure to subscribe to GK Pro. Johnny, Matt Bell, Emerson, and Ezra are tied at 21 under par, and we will catch you on the back nine. See you out there. See you later.